Look! There you are, man! Where the hell have you been? I've been looking all over for you! Would you stop your struggling, man? Let me just take the tape off of it real fast. There's someone behind you, you fucking idiot. Wait, what? So, this is the critic that's giving my boss a run for his money. <sighs> what? Who? You've been stirring up quite the shitstorm for a while now. Reviewing things that should not be reviewed at all. I'm sorry, do I know you? Not personally, but you have met my cousin last year. Don't you remember? A skull face with a hoodie and a shiny ring? Oh, right, right, right. I remember that guy. He was a little over his head when we first met. Until I took it off, that is. <laughs> ha! Don't worry, you'll get yours soon enough. Then why not just do it already? I mean, from what I can tell, you've already knocked me out, tied me up, and took all of my stuff. I mean, what's the- oh, 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 oh. What the hell was that? Just a family heirloom that's manifested entirely out of the cringiest of reactions. Your cringe serpent should have known. I've heard about you guys during my training a while back. Uh, from what I can tell, it seems like your very existence is manifested mostly from other people cringing on viral videos, am I right? Precisely! And now... Wait, hold on. I think I know what this is. This is the part where you tell me that I have a choice either re to review a really bad movie, or you're gonna kill me, and I'll be like, Oh no! Please don't kill me and all that stuff! I'll review whatever you want! And then you'll be like, uh, we're gonna review this movie. I'm just like, oh, just kill me already. Is that about right? You know, you're real smart ass, you know that? Eh, what can I say? I aim to please. Well, fuck it. You're gonna review Neil Breeze Double Down anyways. <laughs> So Double Down is, um, a movie, apparently, that is written and directed by Neil Breen, who likes to make movies, and, um, you know, uh, this is really embarrassing, but, uh, can I, but, can I use my phone to, uh, look him up real fast? I, I'm sorry, this is really embarrassing. <sighs> Thanks, man. A few moments later. Alright, so, according to the vast knowledge that is Google, Neil Breen is an American filmmaker and actor who finances and stars in his own self-produced films. He's been making his own movies for a little over 10 years now, and just recently a few internet critics are starting to get wind of his films from Red Letter Media to YourMovieSucks.org. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you guys can check them out yourselves. Neil Breen first gained notoriety after his first film, Double Down, which became part of the Netflix's library. Since then, his films have been picked up by art house theaters and film festivals, where various small-time critics are now calling Neil Breen the next Ed Wood or Tommy Wiseau of So Bad That It's Good Filmmaking. What's even more surprising is that despite gaining so much attention on the viral realm lately, that no one else is even making their own reviews about his movies. I even asked a group of like-minded internet critics last month on a stream if they would ever consider reviewing Neil Bream's films. But everyone was perplexed because they didn't know who he was. Neil Breen, no, we're not, no! We're not fucking watching the Neil Breen trilogy. Well, okay, not exactly everyone, but uh, let's be honest, this Neil Breen is uh, pretty much gaining a lot of meme traction lately, especially when a lot of people want to pick apart his movies. And I might as well start hopping on the Breen wagon like everyone else, well, mostly because I don't have much of a choice. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at his first film, Double Down. It stars Neil Breen, obviously, as Aaron Brand in this edgy action thriller that is set in Las Vegas during a terrorist attack. A genius computer learner who takes control of the city within the attack, he fights with his overwhelming fits and depression and obsessions with love and death. Are you scared? Well, I sure am, because I'm about to review this entire goddamn movie. Now, before I get into this, I want to point out, especially to Mr. Neil Breen himself, if he so happens to be watching this, that I pretty much had a really hard time trying to buy these movies. 
Not because I mostly followed the links, but if you think I was gonna pay $25 for each of your films, <laughs> yeah, right. However, I will leave a link down below in the description box below if you guys aren't as cheap as I am, if you wanna buy yourself some good quality Neil Breen movies. Because good or bad, I do still give credit where credit is due. Also, keep in mind, Mr. Breen, that this is considered fair use, after all, for me to actually review your movies. Enough stalling! Alright, fine. So, without further ado... Whoa. Where am I? You're in my own personal cringe cavern. Well, that figures. Anywho, this is Double Down. So our movie begins with some lovely stock footage, along with our opening title, you know, now that I think about it, his theme song sounds a lot similar to that of Terminator 2. So you know what that means. Oh, really? I can't use clips of content for in this cavern as well? Alright, fine. Might as well have to go old school. <clears throat> After a lot of camera panning, we get our protagonist, Aaron Brand, who starts the day off right after waking up on the side of a mountain. Because... Rogan Bayonets. While giving his whole background to the audience in narration for the next 18 minutes. I shit you not, this is exactly how the first chunk of the movie starts off. I was the first in my class in college in computer science. I joined the military and became a fighter pilot. I met the love of my life when I was seven and stayed with her forever. We loved each other and we're getting married. I controlled access to the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. I've received bio-electro-medical implants to assist me in carrying out my attacks. So I also take care of white-collar criminals. I can tap into any government secret system by way of my computers, cell phones, and satellites. The governments don't dare try to kill me. <coughs> I mean, there are really no words for this. He talks about himself, stock footage, hacks away on his computer, stock footage, shoots random people off screen, stock footage, eats tuna in his car while driving, stock footage, stock footage, shows off his disappearing, reappearing car while killing an agent with his force field, stock footage, more computer hacking, stock footage, sells vials of chemical drugs, stock footage, tests his chemical drugs at the lake, killing a few fish along the shore, stock footage again, climbs down a mountain, stock footage, kids playing in the background, mystery man kicking over Aaron's boots, stock footage, computer hacking in his car, stock foot. <coughs> 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 I'm sorry, excuse me. Finally, the first line of dialogue finally comes in after 18 minutes when Aaron proposes to his girlfriend naked in a pool. For some reason. And I do have to say that I feel really sorry for this actress because in almost every scene that she's with Neil Breen, she looks very, very fucking uncomfortable. I love you. Will you marry me? Yes. Oh gosh. I am so happy. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me, right? I've had all plenty of first date kisses where they weren't as nearly as awkward as that. Well, it looks like their moment of happiness is over as a sniper with a laser pointer shoots his fiance, killing her, leaving Aaron very distraught and lays next to her corpse face down in the water. It's symbolic. So we cut to him and his fiance again? And then we cut to Aaron changing license plates and clothes in a restroom within the split second. Even though there is a bit of a cut in between shots, which I picked up between the building shadows. Las Vegas, where anything goes. Enjoy it while you can. I'm about to end it all. Oh, thank God. He's gonna end the movie already. Aaron meets up with a government agent as he informs him that the person who they are looking for is in Las Vegas and is planning a huge terrorist attack within the city. After Aaron goes off on a rant about biological weapons, he leaves and we get more long, drawn-out stock footages of the city and other random shit until Aaron wakes up from his dirt nap, typing away on his computer. He locates an old man who slips on a rock awkwardly after stepping on it, to which Aaron aids him. With his final moments, the old man hands Aaron a rock as he buries him and climbs up a mountain. The next morning, he wakes up and starts shouting in the middle of the desert. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Which I'm guessing he's calling out to his casting crew. 
He later pays his respects to what I am guessing is his parents because they show up in the next scene at a lake where he tries to reach out to them. We are then cut to Aaron eating dinner at a friend's house where the second bit of dialogue comes into play. Apparently this little girl has cancer so Aaron takes it upon himself to use the magic rock to bestow a holy moment upon thy child's head curing her of her cancer. I've been given this incredible power. Tonight, I believe I cured Megan of cancer. Um, okay. After another quick climb up the mountain, he goes back to his car in order to rub his crescent wrench on the direct TV satellite dishes in order to hack away on his laptops again. Oh, it's a tech thing. You guys wouldn't understand. After some random stock footages, we get some sort of trade going down and whoopsies. Eh, fuck it. It's just a little bit of anthrax. No, seriously, take your time. Feel free to pick it up whenever you want. More Vegas stock footages rolls by and Aaron meets up with a few more government agents for whatever reason. Oh, sorry. That's okay, no damage. Smooth lady, real smooth. So the agents want Aaron to assassinate a couple of family members who are related to their target of course, Aaron picks out a nice car and decides to poison a couple of strawberries which he will later use to kill them with. Aaron later picks the couple up from the Quick and Go Wedding Chapel. I can't believe we did this. What's that? Being in a Neil Breen film? Now you tell me whose fault was that to begin with. I can't believe this. I need a drink. Trust me, you're gonna need something a lot stronger than a drink. After handing the couple some champagne, Along with the spiked strawberries, the poison seemed to have only done half the job as the husband dies while the wife must have some sort of uncanny immunity system because she just wakes up after passing out for 10 minutes. However, it would seem that the all-perfect Aaron Brand picked up the wrong targets as the agents tell him that the real targets are currently at the lake. One stock footage clip later, Aaron intercepts the other couple only to discover that they already killed themselves directly in the forehead while saying straight up, no less. I really wish I had my clips right now because he's just making this shit way too easy for me. The next day, he takes another look at his dead fiance's corpse and begins jogging up another hill so he can talk to her again and go right back to work at the Vegas Strip. Oh, excuse me. Um, sir, why the fuck did you wipe flour on my arm? Also, it's pretty obvious that Aaron chose this guy as a target because this guy must be a magician at changing clothes. He later calls up a hooker for a certain job and uses his flip phone to hack into a Ferrari in order to steal it. Aaron then picks up a middle-aged Jesse Pinkman only to knock him out and hand him over to the feds because... Holy shit, it's him! It's him! Exactly, that's him! Whoever that is. Later, Aaron and his friends at the Bureau go to meet up with an anthrax dealer for a buy, but things don't exactly go according to plan. It broke open. Run! Kill them. Um, after somehow retrieving the anthrax, Aaron climbs up another mountain to talk to his deadpanned fiance again, and we get more stock footage of Vegas while coming back to Aaron climbing up another mountain to intercept a group of off-screen goons. He then puts on his favorite jean jacket to show off his war medals, like a Pokemon trainer after earning a gym badge, and we get some other scenes of the um, stuff, stuff, and even more stuff. Until Aaron has a meltdown while running down another mountain, he later cuts open his arm to remove something, trips over a skull, picks up more laptops to hack stuff, and after an hour and 19 minutes, we finally get somewhat of a sense of direction as Aaron begins his plan of attack on Vegas while senators and directors from the government gather together for a private meeting. All of Aaron's diversions are starting as a series of stock footages shows, uh, things going down. Aaron then calls them up to let them know that shit is going down as the casual looking terrorists are being attacked and... 
apparently betrayed. The senators and directors are flabbergasted by the series of disaster stock footages and issue an evacuation of the entire Las Vegas Strip. Aaron heads back to his car only to climb up another mountain to pick up his ghostly fiance only to have her disappear on him. In a fit of mild anger, Aaron smashes his laptops, reunites with his fiance in the car again, drives down the open road while showing us one more stock footage of Aaron Brand's favorite mountain and thus concludes Neil Breen's very first movie, Double Down. And I do have to say that out of all the crappy movies that I've seen over the years, both on the internet and everywhere else in general, this film, without a doubt, takes the fucking gold medal when it comes to shitty films. I mean, I don't know what else to say about this other than how incredibly incomprehensible it is from beginning to end. Everything made no goddamn sense the series of stock footages that he used were extremely outdated. Many scenes carried on for way too fucking long, and all of the supporting actors in here couldn't stop looking into the goddamn camera when you should know that you should never do that to begin with. Not to mention, nothing was believable with either the action scenes or, quite honestly, anything else in here. It's quite clear that Neil Breen never had any basic knowledge when it comes to filmmaking 101, and he does admit to that. But I feel like that if he spent at least one semester of film school, that he would have some sort of competence as to how to make a decent movie. And of course, he does go on to make three more films down the road. Three more films, ugh. Three more films, which I will eventually get into with the help of some people some other time. But for now, I'm just going to give Double Down, the double beatdown that it deserves, by giving this my lowest ranking ever, a, a a, an embarrassing zero out of five. I'm sorry, Mr. Neil Breen, but to be honest with you, I'm sure you're a nice guy in real life, but let's be honest, you're, that film absolutely sucks. And now that I'm finished with this review, please get me out of here. Well, I hope you're happy now. Not quite, there's just one more thing. <laughs> yeah, about that. <sighs> with the mouse controller. All right, you prick. I want to know something. Who's your boss? The big guy with the black jacket and the black ski mask. I don't know his name. Bullshit that you don't. Seriously, I don't. But what I do know is he has something big in planned. What? How big? Big enough to spend decades of his life in order to wipe out you and your kind. My kind? What the hell are you talking about? It doesn't matter. Your friend stumbled upon it and he was about to blow the whole thing wide open. His plan is to- Another time. <laughs>